All right, buddy. So, what's your name and where are you from? For the people that don't already know. Uh, I go by Jumpsuit Pablo, uh -huh. and I'm from South Carolina. All right. So, what the hell led you to prison, man? You, I mean, you're over here. I think I seen you. What was it Instagram? Maybe TikTok first, doing kind of like comedy TikTok. skits and stuff. We're going to talk more about that, but, I mean, you've been to prison. South Carolina, they just had a pretty major riot there. What year was that? 2018. 2018, man. Okay, yeah, so I would love to hear how things run in that state. Uh, what led you there? Uh, when I was 21, I just did some, some dumb stuff, man. I did uh, two armed robberies, and they got a mandatory minimum in South Carolina of uh, 10 years. So I served just about nine years off that, so... Went in 21, right when I turned 21, and I came home and turned 30 just a few months ago. I came home on uh, New Year's of this year. Okay, so, damn. Two two robberies. I mean, are you able to uh, speak on it a bit? Was it like a, a convenience store person or what? Yeah, I mean, it was two gas stations, man. I was just, I don't I didn't even have to do it. I didn't really, I didn't have to do anything like that. I was just, I just wanted to do stuff like that. I wanted to live like that. Um, you, you know, just, were you running with uh, anybody out there, or just chilling with a group of people that you didn't? Not really. See, I don't even really come from an area like that. You know, to be honest, I just got—it's kind of a small town, and there's there's nothing like that really going on. You know, I just—I don't know—just got caught up, just wanting to just you live like just, just, just being just, young and dumb, just wild, huh? Yeah, just for for nothing. I mean, did you have anything like, let's say, uh? You know, some people, when they commit these robberies and stuff, you know, they they don't really have any direction to begin with. You know what I mean? They don't have nothing really at all, you know? So, I mean, was it like that for you? Were you going down a downhill at all? Or were you just right there just chilling and decided to rob something? Not really. I mean, I just, I could have, <laughs> I mean, I could have went and got a job. I probably could have, you know, I mean, I just didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to get, I wanted to smoke weed, party. I wanted to. You know, I get, I start listening to that uh, Gucci Mane and Waka oh, back. God, man. not the Gucci Mane. I man. tell you, I wanted, I wanted to be a dude too. So. Bobby! <laughs> <laughs> hey, that Gucci Mane get man. you I going, just, don't I just it? went in too deep. That damn state prop Gucci man. That was a classic. Yeah. Hey, uh, all right, so, I mean, have you ever experienced jail, juvie, or anything before this? Oh, not not really. I mean, like, you know, one time for something just, you know, in and out. But I've never been to prison. Never did any time. Never did any time. What about uh, school? Did you graduate or drop out? What? Um, I think I had to repeat my 12th grade year and then I got expelled. Damn. So you never made it to the graduation? No. Though. Got a GED, but oh, I okay. didn't know. Uh, well, yeah. Okay. Who's counting? Who's counting? <laughs> All right, <damn. laughs> yeah. Neither one's helped me, so. All right, so you you get sentenced to a, a mandatory minimum, and ladies and gentlemen, that's, you know, means he can't get, you know, no less than a 10 clip. That is their stationary sentencing for, what, armed robbery, right? Yeah. And uh, what'd you, uh, was there any kind of violence involved? Nothing like that? No, I mean, they, I mean, they gave it to me, and I left. Yeah. I mean, that's just... Well, how much did I you get all together? <laughs> oh, God. Not 10 years worth. Oh, Jesus. <sighs> Probably a couple hundred bucks from oh, both my. of them combined. See, I hit one and then went 30 minutes down the street to another. Well, I was on the way to one, and then I passed another uh, one on the way, and I was like, hey, that one looks pretty good. That Dang. one looks nice right now also. But, that, so. hey, but people, <laughs> get, people have gotten more time for less. Yeah, you know, yeah. So. Well, I mean, at the time, being young, never, you know, not knowing anything about that life or anything, 10 years seemed like forever to me, you know, and I couldn't really accept, you know, they're, they're coming in the county. I think my getaway driver, they got me a few days later, my getaway driver, he snitched on me. He never went oh, to jail. Oh, man. Um, that was in 2013. Now, in 2016, I got a I, I, I talked to my buddy on the phone in prison and found out that that guy who snitched on me had died in a drunk driving accident. So well, picture that. That was a nice day. Um, one of the better days in prison. <laughs> but, <laughs> hey, that's um, nuts, though, man. You never yeah. know, huh? Yeah, I think it's funny. You know, you you snitched on me 
so that you can stay out and live your life. His life and you think I'm losing out. mine, but at the end of the day, yours is done, and mine's keeping on going. That's that is a wild way to look. I mean, that's that's how it, how it played out. And not to mention, he was a getaway driver, and he died in a car. Oh, he knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. even crazy. I mean, it's almost crazy. like a, a, a story of a comic book a bit. All right. Yeah, that's crazy. Maybe that'll be another story I'll make. Hey, you never know, <laughs> man. Hey, uh, so okay. You get the ten piece. I mean, were people in there? Tell me about your first days going in, man. They had were anybody oh, was anybody messing with you? They had to been picking on you or Jesus. something like that. I knew it was going to be bad. I walked in there the first day, and some guy came up to me off the top. He said, "You look like Rufus, the naked mole rat from Kim Possum." So what? I got all I, they're on me already. I, I wasn't commanding respect on day one exactly, oh, but, but I yeah. stayed in the county for right at two years because I just couldn't. Honestly, I just couldn't. You know, they were coming to me like. We're either going to go to trial or, I mean, you're, you're getting 10. You know, you're not getting less than that. The plea deal's 10. I'm like, I'm not taking that. You know, all three times they're, they're saying 10 with the plea deals. They're not budgeting. And I just couldn't accept the fact that I was, that I was about to get 10 years. You know, I just didn't want to accept it. So I just dragged it out about, you know, till the very end when they were like, listen, you either take it or, or you're going to trial. You know, so I, I just stayed in there, you know, and just I Paid just always – Nope, I didn't have that. I just had a public defender. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, so, I mean, the county, it was. Um, I mean, did, were you ready, were you really prepared for that, Sam, when you agreed to take it? By, by, the, by the time I took it, yeah. Um, you know, because then, then they quit playing with me. They're like, all right, you know what, it's too late for 10. Now you can get an open plea 10 to 30. So Damn. that's what I go in there, and you know how the open pleas go. Yeah, you know you're you're very rarely gonna get the the, the, the bottom, bottom of that. Yeah, and it took me this long to even be okay with ten. So I'm like, well, if I get ten and a half, I'm about to pass out. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but luckily, I mean, I had a real nice judge. Uh, my mom, all my family was there. You know, we did all that and um, all that. She said, but unfortunately, you know, I can't do nothing less than ten. But I am gonna give you ten. I get time served for what you've done so far. So. Um, so I, I got 10, you know, and I, I mean, by that time, I was just sick of it. I'm ready to go. I already accepted it. What was your first in jail, in county jail? What was your first, uh, uh, I guess you could say, situation that turned into, uh, m might have turned into something violent? Um, man, I had a, I had a few things, and I just, I always thought I could fight, but I found out I can't really fight. You know, and so I'm not really a good fighter. Uh -huh. So, you know, I got whooped about two good times just, just randomly. Some some old, you know, there's all types of people in the county. And, uh, some old some old ex-military guy had like a flashback on me and just, uh -huh. just whooped me and uh, for nothing. And uh, I don't whooped know. Whooped you for like, nothing? What really stands out. And then I started, you know, once I started getting beat <laughs> pretty bad, I mean, then I started, you know, getting a little... I can do a little something back, you know, so I'm just getting a little Get used better. To but, uh, it. Yeah. So, you know, and you know how it does you. I mean, it, it, especially when, as long as you don't just not fight. I mean, if, if whether you win or lose, I mean, it, it's going to, you go through it enough times, you know how it does you. So, you know, I'm getting a little better, um, holding my own and just, just adapting to it. So, you know, the, the time that sticks out to me, I was in this dorm. I mean, this is a section of the jail where they put, you know, all the all the problematic people, you know. But uh -huh. you know, I wasn't really problematic. It's just you know how some people just end up there, you know, just just fighting and out. stuff or something. Yeah, I mean, just just how they just do, you know. So I got stuck there. Um, this huge guy, man, just bald head, you know. Um, you know how them how them guys have been on crack on the streets. They'll come in there and just blow up. You know those guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just blow up. And this man, this dude blew up. He was Jack, um, swole guy, man. Um, I don't know, man. I, you know, I was uh, messing around with some people. I think we had like a roll up or something in there. We were about to go smoke it early in the morning. And I guess something came up missing of his roommates, his cellmates, you know. And so they're kind of talking about that. And I'm walking by. And I guess this big guy, he's talking about who all the people that he saw who were up that night, you know, the night before. And he's like, and I just heard him go in him right there. 
Oh, you know, shit. and so I'm well, uh, was he looking at you? Around, my little scrawny, I turn around, I'm like, what, who, me? I said, what'd you say? And he's like, you know, he's not scared one bit. So he's like, oh, uh, you know, very clearly repeats himself, you know, loudly for me. He's like, oh, I was telling him that, uh, you know, whoever stole his stuff, it could have been you because I saw you up. Yeah, I got sassy. I was like, uh, well, listen, I got canteen. I don't got to steal nothing. You hear me? I guess he wasn't really looking, so I was just like, you hear me? Just, man, I don't know why I did that, but he didn't like that. He looked at me and he said, what? What's that supposed to mean? And he walked right up to me and I said, I said, boom, hit me. Damn. Sentence out, just jawed me. That sounds like one of my dad situations. Just, 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 I'm, I mean, for at least two minutes. That may not sound long, but a two minutes, I mean, two minutes, just whooping me. Let me tell you something how the cell blocks, like, it might be open. It's like a hallway, and you got about you know sell, 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 and the, the doors are just open. Yeah. And this man beat me down. It took me in every cell. Oh my god! Beat me in every. Beat I, you I, down I, to I every cell. I remember him throwing me. This is about three cells down. He didn't beat me in the first three. He didn't threw me in the fourth. And I just remember hearing some. Are you kind of trying? Are get you kind of running at the same time as getting beat? <laughs> no, I was just getting her out, man. He was ragdolling me. I couldn't do nothing. And I remember getting thrown in this other room, and somebody's like, uh-uh, get him up out of here. So he picked me up, oh got me out of there, God. beat me into the next one. And um, That sounds like exactly what someone would say. Get, nah, not myself. Get that out of <laughs> yeah. here. So, you know, then we hear the, C, you know, the CO's about to come by. They just did trays and stuff. So he's, you know, coming back by with a tray. So everybody stops for a second. I'm over here all roughed up, just out of breath. dish rag. <laughs> yeah. So I'm at the very back. He's down here. He don't walk off in the opposite direction. He's down here at the very first cell to where I'd have to pass, you know, this narrow hallway, have to scooch by him to get to the big common area again. So, uh, you know, CO passes. Everybody's just out of their cell, you know, just kind of looking, what, you know, what's going to happen that next. awkward spectating. silence. Yeah, spectating. So I'm just walking. And I, man, this is just how dumb I was. The, the, the same stupidity that would make me rob these stores. I come back and just something was eating me up. I just couldn't. It was so embarrassing how bad I just got beat. I just couldn't walk by it. Yeah. Like quiet with my head down and just like walk <laughs> off. And, 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 you know, just that be it. So I just stopped. But I didn't want to, but I, I didn't want to have to do that. But I also didn't want no more, you know, I didn't Bullshit, want no yeah. more pieces of them. So I just kind of stopped right when I got to him. I didn't face him, but I just stopped, you know, and he was kind of hanging in the, in the cell, in the doorway of the cell. And I just stopped. And I was just like looking down, thinking, like, what do I want to do? <laughs> and I just looked over at him. He said, what? You want some more? And I was like, <sighs> and I cocked back. I never even got to launch it. He hit me again. Boom. Beat me again for at least the same length of time. Damn. And then I've had enough. But, you know. But at that point, you know how it is. I mean, yeah. at that point, pretty much the most jack guy in the, in the, in the, in the cell block. Beat me, and then I came back for more and got beat again. So I mean, you get a little that still for counts that. for something. Yeah, you know, that, that, that still counts for something. The yeah, only way you can lose in these jail situations is if you flat out don't fight. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not really. Have really you ever seen lose. that? By the way, have you ever seen someone just not swing on anybody? Just take oh it? yeah, yeah, oh yeah, all the time. Oh yeah. Well, what uh, about okay. about eighty percent of the white guys in there? Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Man. All right, let's talk about that, man. Let's talk about that. How is the structure with with the, with the white guys? Because you know, I've been I've been. I think South Carolina is a lot like Virginia. Uh, you go in there and they're pretty much silent mode. You know, the majority of them are staying out the yeah. way, especially out of you know the gangs' ways and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, is it like that? Pretty much. I mean, you know, they're they're most of them. And don't get me wrong. I mean, there's really no in between. I mean, you got these all the way just non-combative, docile. Just we're just happy to make it through a day where nobody bothers, you know. And then on the, you know, there's probably that's probably eighty percent of them. Then you got about twenty percent who are just all the way burnt, you know, just frontline white boys, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, um, and they, you know, I feel like. You, you know, as that kind of white boy, you feel like you got to go, you know, three times harder because there's so many other white guys giving you 
this bad just off top. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a white guy, if you walk, if a white guy enters a cell block and nobody knows him, he just walks in automatically. You're probably going to get less respect than the average guy Every, just less because, of you know, you, they're going to assume because there's been so many who just let you slap them up, beat them up, do whatever you want, you know? So that's kind of how that is. They're either all the way just non-issue or they're all the way just out there crazy. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, the, as far as the gangs and organizations, this is, you know, I know there are places um, that are really like race, you know, racial. Yeah. Um, segregated. That's not really. I even if they wanted to, I don't think the the white guys could even <laughs> have nothing. You know what I mean? Like, there's just not. You know, when numbers, anybody who lives like that, I mean, they're just. It, it's really just blood cripping G's, and then you got the Muslims, of course, um, who ain't no joke. <laughs> the Muslims ain't never yeah. Not yeah. But um, you know, it's not really. It's not racial. You know. Um, if anything, if you got if you got these crazy white boys, they're gonna be some form of of G or or you know even Crip sometimes. So yeah, you know. Yeah. Other than that, I mean that you know. No, no uh, no, no white guy bloods. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey man, it's crazy. I thought for sure <laughs> so, sooner or later someone's gonna be like, man, yeah, there, there's a few, you know, but. It sounds exactly like Virginia to me, man. There ain't really no segregation where people can't eat and gamble with each other when it comes to race, but white guys always usually are getting the shit into the stick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so what level prison were you in? Um, in South Carolina, we got one, two, and three. Uh, so I was always at two, pretty much. Three is usually for like, you know, life. 30, 35, you know, stuff like that. Or just, you know, I mean, you know how it is. I mean, you can have threes who do well, move down to a two, and you got twos who do bad and move up to a three. You know? It's much so, easier, I think, to work with just three levels. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, so you were locked up during the time of that riot that happened, right? Yeah. How, how was that? They, and that, they, was, that just, that riot changed everything, man. I'm talking about it to the color uniforms they get. So like every, it changed everything. Um, you know, I think we've never even got to go back to the kitchen after that. You know, they just started bringing trays. I mean, and this was in uh, a different, a totally different this, prison. This was, I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't at this yard. Um, this was a three Lee County. Yeah. And, um, this was two organizations. They got, I think it lasted about three or four hours. Um, a riot, um, like the actual police from the, you know, outside police had to be called. Um, I remember the news clip. If you, if you, uh, ever saw that news clip? You can find it on YouTube um, of the newscaster talking about there were bodies stacked on top of each other. Yeah. Um, there were pictures floating around. Just, you know, all the inmates got phones. So, I mean, everybody's sending them to each other. But I saw them on Facebook, too, for a little bit, you know, before they get taken down. I mean, there's pictures of guys, like, they're out there dead, holding this homemade tomahawk, you know, like a broken mop stick with the, with the metal grate kind yeah. of formed into a triangle shape. He's died with it in his hands, and you can see his throat's been cut. Um, you know, just, just bodies in the, in the out, out on the rec court, you know, there were yeah. people climbing the, 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 the fence. They broke out. This is at nighttime in this episode. They, they busted windows out to get away from this, um, try to climb the, the fence to get away. You yeah. Know? Um, so yeah, it was I pretty think, brutal. I can't even imagine being stuck in a locked gate area and these yeah. bulls is just killing each other and. You, and you know that a, you're, you're going to be next one. You, you're just running, ripping it and running, you know? They, uh, my last year in prison, they finally, you know, whoever they were going to, you know, the real police, you know, they they did a big time investigation on that. Um, and whoever they were going to charge, they 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 charged them. They, you know, they've done all that. Um, but I know, like, you could, you could find the evidence or the report, you know, and there's like a clip, an audio clip of this guy in his cell calling the police. Like the the outside police, because you know the guards ain't ain't gonna do nothing. Oh um, shit, he had to call the cops. When prison like on that. us. Yeah, he called the actual sheriff's office, and he said, "Man, they're at my door. I had about five people at his door trying to break in his door, bust the window, get in there, about to come in there and kill him." You know, like I can't imagine how a contraband God. cell phone saved his life. Yeah. Called so, the police, so, and he's like, and the officer's like, "I need your name, though." And he like, you can hear he doesn't want to give it up just because you know he doesn't want to get in trouble for the wrong one, right? 
well, we can't come up there until I know your name. Like, you know, that's crazy. But, um, yeah, I mean, that was crazy. So, so after they, that. What they know, do, like a, uh, a statewide uh, lockdown? Lockdown for, for months, man. And then they, they put up these like 50 foot tall nets, you know, these big poles with these nets. And stuff so that, um, you know, because they tried to say it was about contraband, which yeah, I'm not, you know. So they put up, you know, to prevent contraband, because all you got to do is come through the woods and throw it over. And they know, you know, they know that. It's just, you know. Yeah, I just, half I time. just was speaking to my uh, viewers about how many prisons you could just toss that shit right on over. Oh, yeah. And they know, I mean, it's just a game of, you know, sometimes they catch it, sometimes they don't, but they know it's not. Yeah. And, um, you know, so they put up these nets. Well, you know, and they already know this. They've been knowing this, but you know, immediately that people already get, you know, flying drones, all that, you know, <laughs> they're going to get it in. So, um, but it did make the price of phones go up. I remember before that it was, you could, about 500, if you knew the guy well, maybe 300 for a new phone. Um, after that, man, I remember paying 4,500, 5,000, 2,500 for phones. Used phones. Might not even have a charge. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. That's treacherous. <laughs> buying about 10 of those $30 track phone, you know, little $30 uh, Alcatel phones from the dollar store. That's 300 bucks for 10 of them. You get them in, you're making that easy all day long, three grand a pop. And they're going to go in a day. Yeah. Unreal, man. Uh, That's 30 grand. They got to worry about any kind of bandits ripping and running, trying to trying to take their cheeks or anything like that in South Carolina. <laughs> no, well, cheeks, no. Uh, you know, I don't. I can only speak for you know, my you know where I've yeah. been, but that ain't going on, man. If 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 you do that or you're with that, or they even got a good strong, valid suspicion, it's it, the whole dorm is probably gonna come together and get you up out of there. Yeah. They're not. They're not. You know, back in the day, you know, probably when I was a kid. From you know, from what I understand, from the from the you know the OGs and the con, you know people who've been in there for uh, you know longer than I've been alive, that used to go on, but no, not not that ain't going on, man. Um, and of course, if they even suspect, you know, especially if you're in a gang or anything, if they even allegations, it, you know, it's a problem. So, yeah. um, I mean, was there ever any times in prison, man, you had to do something that you didn't want to do? Um, not really. I mean, you know, there was violent situations that I didn't want to yeah. have to go head first into, but I mean, you got to, you know, I mean, you did don't you have, ever to. have to use your weapon. Yeah. Yeah. How was that experience? Uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's one of those feelings know, where, you know, you got to go. You got yeah, it, you, know it's, I mean? you know, it's, it's, it was this funny, I, I feel like I kind of went, I could, I could divide my time up into phases, you know, and I know there was a, there was a time where, um, I was, you know, I think if there's a time that comes where you've been in there long enough to where everyone on the outside has kind of forgotten you and you still have enough time to go to where no one's going to be thinking about you again anytime soon. And you're kind of just stuck in there on your own. And that's when all that, that, you know, that stuff sets in that, you know, might be depression, bitterness, um, anger, you know, resentment, whatever, you know, when it, and, and that's just when it, you know, it just, it just, it just, you know, it's a bad phase. And so that's kind of when I did my, bad deeds you know just stuff like that you know eventually i found my way um and i didn't really have you know i just i mean you go in there and you learn i mean some people don't but i did uh, i didn't really have any street skills or anything like that you know i wasn't i didn't live that life you know i was but i i i did know how to observe i didn't know how to learn and i did pick up on stuff really quickly and just learn how things work and knew how to get the program and um, I eventually found my way. And, um, you know, it's not, I mean, when you play the politics, right, it's not, you know, you can live pretty comfortable. Um, there was times where, you know, I've had some bloods. I mean, you know, they uh, just outnumbered me, you know, and it's not, you know, and, and, and I've seen plenty of times, I've seen one person put 
three, four, five people, you know, behind their door, scared. Just one man. I've seen it happen plenty of times. So it, you know, it's, it's kind of like the Spartans and the Persians. You know, if you got one man who's really, really built like that, and these others ain't. Yeah. They don't. You know, numbers don't matter. But in this situation, you know, these they were kind of built like that. So I still yeah. didn't stand a chance. So and it was just like you know, I you can't like yeah, you know, you're not gonna win. Like the outcome's gonna be bad if you go, if you do this. If you get into this, but you can't not get into. You have to. Yeah. You know, like there's no that you can't not do it. You just gotta just let's get it. Um, you know, people wanted to take my phone. When I've had people try to, you know, they pull oh, knives the, on me. When you got surrounded by the bloods, was that the time where you you stabbed? You had to pull out the knife? No, luckily, um, you know that that situation. It was really a misunderstanding. Um, there was just confusion. I had like two phones. You know, and there was some confusion of, you know, what, you know, something happened with a guy. He went to lock up, left the phone behind. He was getting extorted by these bloods. Um, so they're looking for his phone. Someone else took it. You know, people buy bulk of the same phone when they throw them in. So a lot of phones are the similar, the, the same exact phone, you know. Yeah. So they get, they, you know, whatever happens, they think I got the phone, you know. But really, th- these are my phones. So it's just a lot of confusion, and they they think I'm really just like you know, damn, thugging it. They move you know, shit down to phone. you. Yeah, so they all come in. They I'm surrounded in there. They got my door locked. They in there with me. I ain't there. Ain't no getting out. But luckily, at the last minute, you know, the the guy who was really just leading them, you know, he really let me speak and heard what the situation was, and it, and it clicked. And he said, you know, he, you know, you're gonna keep. He he was righteous about it. I mean, right is right, wrong is wrong, and I didn't, you know. It, it wasn't. You got blessed on that day, huh? Yeah, and so it, you know that was it when they left. Wow. But, uh, I mean, that wow. could have been real bad. bad. But you know, for me, what uh, <laughs> the scary stuff about prison, man? And I'm not no tough guy. I wasn't running no yards. I wasn't the, you know, the killer in the dorm or nothing like that. But the scary stuff for me about this this prison stuff, man, and the prison time, it was never really what's going to happen to me physically or violence wise. You know I mean? It was just, I don't know. I just didn't care about that. I just assumed it was going to happen and I was just ready. You know, it's just going to have to happen. What scared me was the, it was, it was a lot of things. What, what, what was this going to do to me? How was this going to change me? What is this going to do to me mentally? These 10 years, you know, I'm coming in here 21. I'm growing into a man back here. I'm going to come out here 30. I'm going to have no job, no money, no education. I don't know how to do anything. I don't have any skills. I'm a felon. I can't, you know, I'm going to be right back at step one, living at my mom's house, probably, depending on her. And it just scared me to think of that being my future, you know, and, and that's what worried me. I mean, and, and just what am I missing out on out there? You know, just the, the, the missing out. And just losing all that time that I can't get back, that's just what terrified me. Am I going to, what am I going to be like when I get out? Am I going to be, you know, am I going to go crazy back here? I mean, you hear people in the cells next to you, you know, start talking to themselves, losing their mind. These are these are coherent people you deal with. And then, you know, just one day they just snap. I heard people 3 a.m. just run into the wall, scream. Screaming about the devil, just then ran full blast into the wall, smack into the wall talking to themselves, just, just losing it. And you're like, is that going to happen to me next month? You know, and that, that was what scared me. I just, you know, I just wanted to come out all right, you know, just intact. I bet um, you, uh, those guys that had more than 10 years, you probably, they made you feel a little better, didn't they? Oh, yeah. I mean, of course, <laughs> you know, and, and you know, like I was saying at the start, 10 just seemed outrageous to me. You know, you might as well tell me forever. You know, <laughs> yeah. when you get back there and, I mean, you, you, you learn what's what. And, you know, like you said, them people people have got more for less. And, um, you know, looking back, yeah, it was a blessing. I should have. I was stupid for not taking it immediate, you know, the, 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 the 10 years. So, yeah, I mean, um, yeah. <laughs> Who's your... Uh, worst celly you had, man. Ever had a worst celly experience? <laughs> Jesus. Listen, my first, oh. my first cellmate. 
I've had plenty of bad ones. Yeah, Jeez. yeah, so have I, so have I. <laughs> My first cellmate was this old guy named Ricky. Nice guy, but he just was fried. He was probably 50, and he was already just done. Um, he had lost it before he came, you know, and he, uh, man, I swear, it, it, it was the first prison yard I was on, and uh, he was my first cellmate. He was on the bottom. I was on the top, and um, it was the summertime when I got there, so we had these big, loud fans going, rong, 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 no rong, AC, rong. huh? No AC, so, you know, it, especially at night when it's quiet, you couldn't, you know, wasn't, wasn't quiet. You know, you got the rong, 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 rong fan going so i couldn't hear perfectly but you know I, I lay there i don't sleep with a pillow i just kind of when i'm ready to sleep i turn over and just put my ear to the mat and go to sleep so you know just the way the the, the you know it's bunk beds just the vibrations when someone talk i could hear him down there talking you know <laughs> and um i heard this man down there talking for for several nights in a row he'd only do it at night you know the rest of the day he'd just sit on his bunk just just staring you know what i mean or reading a magazine or something you know, and um, and I heard him. I said, "Man, this guy's got a cell phone the whole time. He's got a cell phone." I'm over here. I'm over here thinking text. he's talking to God. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm over here. I need, need to send text messages. I need to make calls. I need I need canteen money. You know, I, I got messages to relay to people. So I'm like, "Man, this dude ain't even offered to let me use the phone. What's he think I'll switch or something?" So I'm like, "Um, uh, like, man, I'm gonna ask." I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask him when the time's right. I'm gonna ask if I can use it. Huh? Man, I'm talking about the next night. I think it rained or something, and 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 it cooled the weather down real good that night. And so we turned the fans off, and I could hear better. And I swear, man, I hear this man down there talking finally. And I listen real close. He's down there to my son. Oh, you ain't gonna feed me? You ain't gonna feed me? <laughs> Hell no! Hell no! I ain't gonna feed you. Oh, oh, ain't no way. I've been working all day. You gonna feed me? No, I ain't. No, I ain't. This is my food. Oh, you ain't. You ain't worth nothing. Yep. So ain't. He's down there. I'm talking about this dude's having a full blown, multi character, different voices going back and forth, arguing about a bag of lunch or something. So it ain't no just, cell phone. With, no, it ain't no cell phone. Holy shit! He's just down there, just. Holding the podcast down there. Holy shit. So there's that guy. That freaked me out because it was my first one. Oh, I didn't have listen, I didn't have guys. I didn't have this fat white guy look like Mario. Came in there. This man ain't never did drugs in his life. I don't know what he got locked up for, but he had about three years to do. He's got a wife. This man's like late thirties. Got a wife. Got got kids. Got a nice house, family, you know, structure out there. Great wife sends him money. Minutes on the phone. This man st starts doing meth back there. Starts doing it just out of boredom. Starts doing meth. Gets out there, man. Starts using <laughs> cell phones. He would check the ring doorbell camera on, on his house. Oh my god! That his wife would feel that, and he would he would he would be up three days and swear he I seen the reflection of another man in the in the car window. Someone's in my driveway. <laughs> Literally ruined his marriage like she left him divorced because he just went crazy started like accusing her of this Smoking just 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 lost it on that man watching the tour. green so I, camera on a contraband yeah. phone this is the best damn story some of the best stories i've heard man dude dude is like kind of hacking her gmail you know like just all <laughs> this stuff. Out, he, he calls he calls and, and these are like not these aren't like He's got to be the only one in this like family circle who's ever been to prison. I mean, he didn't belong there. And he is calling like nice civilian people, you know, friends of his wife. And he's like, he's just like fishing. He don't even know. He's just like trying to like fish. Holy shit. And because he's just crazy. He's like, he called this lady at 3 a.m., a good friend of his wife's, and said, I hate to tell you this, but so-and-so, my, you know, my wife is, is cheating on us with, with, <laughs> this lady's, with this lady's husband. Just made it up. Oh, and so, like, this lady man. just knows him to be, like, a coherent, normal person, not on drugs, and so she thinks his truth, has a breakdown on the phone at 3 a.m. I'm in my bunk trying to sleep listening. Oh, I'm listening to this God. man ruin his life. Like, you know, wife leaves him. All type of stuff, man. It it was so there was that nuts, man. Um, 
Man, I don't had a I don't had a guy who he couldn't stand the sound of my crock scraping on the floor, and he was like <laughs> try to pull his hair out. And say, I can't take it. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I'm gonna think I'll just move out of this cell. Uh, yeah. I can't even walk. It's time to try a new cell, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, listen, something walk. about South Carolina. People are all just already just just country, man. Just yeah. burn. Yeah. Just burn. <laughs> Those were some damn good stories, and I'm sure you got plenty more where that came from. Maybe, you know, a few months down the road or so, you come on for a part two. But look, man, oh, yeah. uh, tell the people where they can find you, what you got going on, you know? Uh, uh, all the good find stuff. me on TikTok. Uh, find me over there. That's where I got most of my following. I've got about 300K on there. Nice. Check me out there. Um but I really want you to sub to my YouTube. I'm really focusing on YouTube right now. I'm posting prison stories. You've actually watched about maybe two, three of them on your channel before, reacted to them. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I've reacted. So, yeah, I have reacted to a couple of yours yeah. on here. Yeah. So uh, some good, funny prison stuff. Y'all might like it. Go check me out. Jumpsuit Pablo on YouTube. And, uh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to keep everything linked and pinned in the comment section description of the video. And, uh, you know, any any piece of advice that you could give someone going into uh, South Carolina before we leave? Don't go looking for trouble and always remain useful.